Hey, this is Scott Spears, and I'd like to welcome you to yet another edition of The Exchange. And boy, this is going to be a rip-roaring edition, because we've got some topics that cover the, really, waterfront of what's going on in the world today. Joined this week by Matt Morgan and Carrington Nelson. Matt, how you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. It's great to be here. We're at the end of January, beginning of February. Winter is half over. Here we go, heading into spring. Absolutely. You know, I think spring is probably one of my favorite times of the year. It's not, uh, you know, it's not, it's not hot yet. It's not, uh, it's not cold. There's no snow. There's a lot of rain, but you know, you gotta, you get, the rain's okay. I like the sound of it, so it's okay. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm hoping that the groundhog predicts that there will be spring on the way. Although I think that spring is actually my least favorite season. Really? Yeah. You like winter? No, I don't like winter. But I better think than spring. Better than spring. I think my ranking is going to go summer, fall, winter, spring. Is that like? I think that's a song. Summer, summer fall, fall winter, winter spring. spring. Yeah, there's a song. I oh, forget okay. what it is. Bring something yeah, to mind. Yeah, something rattled around. That's in just there. how I would. That's how I would rank the seasons. I just think spring's kind of the worst. It's pretty cold and rainy, like you said. Oh, no, no. Are back. Well, that's that stuff you put in your hair. Oh, yeah. I don't think people realize that. Yeah, the bugs are just drawn to me. Well, they. I mean, I don't have that problem. Mm -hmm. Do you have a problem, Matt? No. There it's you go. Just me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's that oil of Olay you put on your skin. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that's almost a WGH <laughs> mandatory thing for certain people. So you got to be on the inside to understand that. I don't understand why you rub that stuff on your skin. What, what am I rubbing on my skin? I don't know, but I can see it from here. People know, I have to explain it to the people at home. What? Because I'm right here, like what? a foot from your face. What's on my so skin? The people are, there's clearly something you're rubbing on your skin. I don't know what you're doing these days. I don't know what I'm doing these days <laughs> I mean, either. you can act all... Uh, Does my skin look good, though? Well... <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> All I'm saying is, you know, I, thank God we filter the pictures because, I mean, really, if people saw what I was seeing, I mean, sometimes I look over there and, you know. Jump scare. Well, it's it's like I'm looking into the Milky Way universe over there. I see bumps and all kinds of things going <laughs> My skin on. is not bumpy. You can, you can come at me for freckles or the veins in my face. Oh, I see bumpy. those too. Yes, yes. I didn't want to the, pick on those. The veins and the freckles are very prominent. Bumps? No. My skin's smooth. Listen, your face is like a road map, but I don't like to bring up things like that, but that's what it reminds me every so often i look over there and i say texas i think we're in texas tonight and then you turn like that and i think maybe we're going toward the east coast yeah, i don't need it 400 oh goals. i don't need it hey <laughs> there's gonna be it's, it's gonna come to sorry it's gonna texas, come to, a road map? that's what you do when somebody's attacking you and you attack them back yeah, that, that's you so, go low and i go that's lower. third grade that's so third grade you go low and I go that lower. is so third grade oh my gosh well we're off to a nice start this week matt I can feel it already. <laughs> and we've got the heavy topics, too, because guess what? It all came together this past Sunday as the Super Bowl is set for 2024. And, Matt, you got some splaining to do, as they say, Arr. because I said, excuse me, I was the person on the show who was the illiterate football person, I guess. <laughs> we can't even put him on the show because he doesn't know anything about football. And two weeks ago, I predicted that the uh, Chiefs... Chiefs. Oh. Sorry, I need... Now, stand back. Sorry. If I need your help, I'll wait for you. Okay. I'll throw a flight. Let, let me help. Me. <laughs> the Chiefs were going to beat the Bills, and no, then... No, 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 no. You said the Chiefs were are going, going to the Super Bowl. The, you said the Bills were going and to the then, Super Bowl. And then, we'll and then, we'll play the tape back. And then after the Bills lost... No, 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 no. What, no, 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 when, no. When, when I said, what team is that boy on... And when I learned it was the Chiefs, I said, oh, no, they're going to the Super Bowl. I said, they're gone. And so then they won. And then I came to you the next week, and you got almost furious with me because I said, they're, they're going to beat the uh, Ravens. There's no doubt about it. They're going to beat the Ravens. And you said, no, the best team out there. They're going to so win that thing. It's over. Who won the game? Who's in the Super Bowl? All right, so Taylor Swift. I, uh, okay, so see, so, that's right. Not e not even Kelsey. It's Taylor Swift's in the Taylor Super Bowl. Taylor Swift's in the Super Bowl this year. I told you when I saw I'm that. So I said, excited! So, I'm gonna watch Super Bowl more the, close. Okay, than I so ever the have. football expert versus the football illiterate. <laughs> Explain that. So, one so to by me. the way, the, the, whole, the whole thing about the football letter and, and, and uh, uh, we might not even be able to put them on the show is uh, <laughs> like I had my brother on the show and then I was like I was like I was like I was gonna ask Scott if he wanted to be on the show but I don't even know if Scott would be able to like talk all that much because you know it's football I don't know how much Scott knows about football. Well, now you know. <laughs> he knows enough. He knows enough. But um, 
I did, however, at work one day, Scott told me that he thinks the Chiefs were gonna were gonna go to the Super Bowl, and I told him that I think the Ravens had a, had a good chance of winning. You told me I was nuts because Mark Andrews came back. He's the starting tight end. He was one of the best tight ends in the NFL this year. Um, so basically, their entire team was healthy, with the exception of J.K. Dobbins. Uh, so I mean, they they were looking like they're gonna be good, but um, uh, the the Chiefs just just you know they, the Chiefs won. So, like, I mean, the Chiefs played well. I watched the game. So you don't believe... Because really, after this whole thing, the conspiracy roof fell in. And we'll get into a lot of oh, these conspiracies. Oh, there's a lot of conspiracies now. You know, I, the world just came to an end when this happened. But the first conspiracy, we got to take these in rows because they're coming in waves. But the first one is, is that the NFL wanted them to be in the Super Bowl. It's going to make money. It's going to make more money than it normally would. It's going to be watched by norm, be more people than it normally would. You're going to have Taylor Swift a part of it. And you know what? I can't say that that sounds illogical. Because they shouldn't be in the Super Bowl if you look at how good they are. Well, I mean, the Chiefs have, throughout the Chiefs, well, I, I wouldn't say throughout the Chiefs' history, but throughout the Chiefs' history with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, because that was, I mean, Patrick Mahomes became the starting quarterback, like, sh like I mean, obviously shortly after Alex Smith, but that was a ways back, so I wouldn't say a ways back, but... Like, I, Patrick Mahomes has been the quarterback of the Chiefs for almost as long as I can remember. But, so, with, with the uh, Chiefs quarterback being Patrick Mahomes, uh, the Chiefs have had an extraordinary comeback ability. Uh, they put up, I think, three touchdowns. I Quote me, if uh, you could uh, find the score somewhere. But they put up three touchdowns in the span of, like, I don't know, like, f five minutes or something like that. Maybe less. Um, to come back uh, and, and even up the score against the Texans, I think it was, or the Titans maybe, like last year or the year before. But t they did have, I think they had Ty Tyreek then, but Tyreek no longer plays for them. So Who does he play for now? He plays for the Dolphins. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. So the question was, <laughs> do you think that there could be a conspiracy here? That the NFL wanted them in the game. I don't think that was the question. But <laughs> I okay, think it was. I'll, I'll I think answer, when we replayed the tape, it was. <laughs> All right, and I'll, I'll answer the question. Uh, do I think there's a conspiracy? It's hard to tell at this point because we went so long there. <laughs> sorry, I really sorry. I lost control of the <laughs> question. I, was, I, I, had to, I had to, you know, talk, talk about the football a little bit. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't now that we got the history of the NFL <laughs> out of the way, let's go back to the initial question. Is it a conspiracy? Because that's what people are saying. Um... Is it a conspiracy? What are, what are the odds? I mean, let's be honest here. The year of their relationship, the year of the 400% jersey sales going up, the year of the ratings on their games going up higher, as high as the Super Bowl, it's only second to the Super Bowl of last year, the year of their relationship, they just happened to eke on into the Super Bowl, that's very mm, wishy-washy. I mean... I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say that. Like I said before, I mean, the, like, like, go back I said to the it. whole, like, go back to the whole, like, like Patrick Mahomes at quarterback thing. Like, he, they, they have had a great comeback ability since Patrick Mahomes has been at quarterback, basically. Um, so, I mean, I think that it's it's fair to say that they go into the Super Bowl, especially with Travis Kelsey and you know, Travis Kelsey is having having one of the best years he's ever had. But you don't think that's irony? This year, I'm sure he he's having a good year. Well, I mean, oh, he is. Even before the whole Taylor Swift thing started, he, like, he's been having uh, one of the best years of his uh, NFL career this year. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is there's an irony to this. There's only two teams that go to the Super Bowl, and one of them is going to be the most watched team of the year. That usually doesn't happen. Okay, the only thing hey, about whoa. it... Hey, I just have a question. I'll, well, I'll come, when we get to you, I'll, I'll point <laughs> or something. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> um... So, <laughs> sorry. Um, I mean, players often play better in primetime games. I don't know if it, if it matters so much in the NFL because base uh, all games for the most part are televised just locally. There are like you know the games of the week, but like in college especially, like if you're a primetime game like the televised games, you tend to uh, play better. You have something to say? You can play it, or <laughs> there you go. I was just just thinking about it. You were just being it. rude. I you were was, interrupting. He was. He took a breath. It was my turn. Well, to when talk. somebody takes a breath, it just means they need <laughs> oxygen. It doesn't mean they're done talking. <laughs> it's my turn. Go ahead. 
Uh, the, the only thing is, like, the games are televised. I mean, you could, you're could you watching them play out. Like you, That would mean, like, the refs had to either be, like, in on this plan or the other people teams said that. have to be in on the plan of, like, of okay, we want to, like, play so, worse for them to go. Scott is right. Through the last few years, people have been complaining that the, that the, that the refs have been awful and it gets progressively worse every year. Hmm. And you know what? I've been talking this on the morning show, and it's split. Also, sorry, didn't mean to like cut you off. No, I'll, 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 you can do it. Go right. I'll allow you. Oh, to do okay. It. <laughs> but um, so the re- fun fact: NFL refs aren't full time refs. They don't. It's not their full time job. They're part time refs. They so, work at Krispy Kreme. I guess they work wherever. But um, uh, so they don't really have incentive to not throw the games or call bad calls or anything. Like obviously they could be fired, but it's not a full time job. So it's not like this is your profession. Right, but what I'm saying is, is I've been talking about this on the morning show, and we've gotten calls galore because people love to talk about this. And I just think that this is, first of all, here's what I don't like. Okay, and I don't give a flip-flop about football. But here's what I don't like, is I don't like that the next day, the lead story in the USA Today was not that the Chiefs won. It was not that the 49ers won. It was that Taylor Swift (laughs) ran on the field to kiss her boyfriend. Yeah! That's the number one story the next day. This is a problem. I saw stories about her lipstick, too. That her lipstick And the person who who designed her shirt (laughs) has now got to deal with the NFL. (laughs) I mean, what is going on? The whole thing's a little wishy-washy, if you ask me. I think it's great. That's so funny. I think it would be pretty funny if Taylor Swift didn't show up to the Super Bowl. I hope she doesn't. No, she's already said she's she's coming back from Big No, she's, she said, I'm coming back from Beijing or wherever yes, she's Yes, yes, she's going to fly back, and then she's going to watch the Super all... Bowl, and then she's flying to Australia like immediately after to do her next This show. is all so pathetic. Um, I mean, I've never seen something so pathetic in pathetic? my Pathetic? What what's pathetic? Well, if you give me a second, I'll tell you. Okay. Listen, did I take a breath? <laughs> yeah, you can Here's me what a chance I, to Let me tell you what's pathetic about this whole situation, is that this is what it's come down to in the NFL. The, the National Football League, the sport that draws the most viewers in the United States of America... The, the, one of the most, if not the most watched thing all year round is always the Super Bowl. And now it's become the Taylor Swift show. Like she doesn't have enough. Like she hasn't been Time Magazine Person of the Year. Like she doesn't make a zillion dollars. Like she doesn't get on the cover of all other magazines. And, and this whole idea that I keep getting from... Because I posted on Sunday night when that game was... I didn't, well, I didn't watch the game. But when I heard about it, I posted something like... I could have told you four weeks ago that Taylor Swift's boyfriend's team was going to be in the Super Bowl, and boy, people got a little, and and I I said, is she going to propose, you know, these questions that people are asking now, and people got a little ticked off about that, all the Kelsey boys don't need her, and they're good players, and just let them be in happy, and let them be in love, and blah, 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 let me tell you something, Uh, first of all, she does need him, because his jersey sales went up. Yeah, you mean he needs her. She doesn't need him. Yeah, what did I say? You said uh, that. Yeah. Okay, that yes, yes. She, she needs him. She, yeah, she. D- he needs her. No, see, you did it too. I just said it because you said, what did I no, say? No, you said it wrong. I said it wrong because you said, what did I say? I so I was you were telling wrong. you what you said. <laughs> oh, my wrong. Lord. I was just explaining to you why you were wrong. <laughs> well, thank you. I always like a good explanation when I'm wrong. Just don't straighten it out. Let's kill some more time by You're the welcome. explanation. You're welcome. All right, here's my point He needs her. Yes. <laughs> Because he is not a star. He is a, a sports person. He's no, a sport. No, I'm no, telling. Listen, Travis 400. Kelsey. What has he done in her sales? What has he done for her concerts? What has he done for her career? She has made him somebody. People outside of football know who he is. His jersey sales went up 400%. The ratings on his games are up. And his team's in the Super Bowl. This whole that we're equals, no. Not, not, a, no. Not. Sorry. I mean, I think Travis Kelsey is known outside of the outside now, of. Uh, fo- I mean, now. Even before that. I mean, I agree. I did know who he was before I didn't Taylor know who Swift. He was. I mean, I did, but. Well, I didn't. Oh, that's okay. I was correcting you because what I was saying was oh. I didn't know who he was, and you seem to think that you did know, but I didn't know. So there you go. <laughs> We were talking about me at that point. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to explain <laughs> that to you because you <laughs> were wrong. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. No, I mean it's not equal, is it? I mean, so, in terms of football, I would say that more people are watching the football game for the football game than Taylor Swift. Oh, I don't know anymore. Like the I Super think Bowl, that, I think think that, that base that's always like, been there I think is... You could take the, I think you should take the average viewership of the NFL and then take the viewership... Or, sorry, the, the, uh, the, the Super Bowl 
and then take the average viewership, or I guess the, the viewership of this Super Bowl, and then just, like, you know, do some simple... Yeah, simple but more people, oh, you're going to see it. No, but more You'll people watch Guaranteed. the Super Bowl than, like, just football fans anyway. No, watch... But, but I mean, it's going to go up, I agree. So, watch what the ratings are on this Super Bowl versus last year. That's all crazy. you have to do. It's going to be crazy. It is. It, it's a drama now. Mm -hmm. Somebody said to me the other day, is he going to propose with his Super Bowl ring? Yeah, I've heard proposal as a theory. See? I've heard that she, um, whenever Usher does the halftime performance, that it's going to not, gonna not actually be Usher and that Taylor Swift is going to come perform at halftime. I think or, she'll be a part of the halftime show. I would um, almost guarantee it. I don't that, think she will be. Uh, I think she will be. Oh, or that she's going to announce um, Reputation Taylor's version at the Super Bowl. From what What I, is that? She's re-releasing all of her albums that she recorded previously because of her terrible manager, Scooter Braun. We've talked about this before. This is all show business, isn't it? I mean, what Those happened? are just the three theories, but I don't think that... I, the only thing I can see is proposal, because I don't think that she's going to perform at the halftime show, because that kind of takes his thunder, uh, like his thing. Well, like, his thunder's wants, gone. No, but she's well, not intentionally doing that. All she's doing I mean, is showing up at his stuff to support Why him. did she run down there and kiss him on the field? What was all that about? Because they were in a relationship, and she wanted to support her boyfriend. No, well, she, but she took away from the win. And you know, he's she not... She ran down to kiss her boyfriend. That's not her fault that people watched her do it. Listen, you have to be self-aware. If you're Taylor Swift, you know if you go to the field, the cameras are going to be on you. Now, you cannot be that naive. Okay, she knows that they're probably going to be on her, but she's not going to not, like, congratulate her boyfriend and, like... No, but it did steal his thunder. The next day, it was the number one story. Yes, it but, wasn't... like, that's not her fault. Well, I think it is, because I think it... Because this whole idea that if she really wants to be inconspicuous about this, she should just be behind darkened windows and not do all this stuff in public. Why does she have to do it on the field? Why couldn't she wait for the tunnel? Because all the other, like, families of the players were down there, like, congratulating their family All members. the other families of the players are not billionaire I know, singers. But, like, but she shouldn't have to, like, hide back in the corner just because oh, of who she is. Oh, you pretend like this is a romance. This is not a this real... This is a romance. No, this it's is not. This a romance. This is a, this is a financial monetary business goal going on here and I I that people get upset about this is shocking to me because it's very clear that it will end and she's gonna make a lot of money on the song because this relationship is more high profile than anything else she's ever been in we don't really know anything about the actual relationship just that they're together that's exactly right what do we know about this relationship we don't so I right. mean, so it's not really that public just that they're together well are they we don't really know you know, I don't, I, to be honest, it, it's so bizarre, but um, I'll tell you who it's not bizarre to, is Fox Sports's Colin uh, Coward. You know him? I do. All right, well, then you'll just be right up your alley. Because apparently he's a uh, Taylor Swift defender. So he got ticked off by all these people going after Taylor Swift and uh, Travis Kelsey after this win. And this is what he said, this is a little bit of what he said. There's a lot of really weird, lonely, insecure men out there, Coward said. The fact that a pop star, the world's biggest pop star, is dating a tight end who had one of his greatest games ever and a network puts them on the air briefly, that bother bothers you? What does that say about your life? A talented and a beautiful woman is on the air. One who would never pay attention to lonely men and it bothers them, he said. There's a stat out there. It's kind of uncomfortable for you sad guys that 50% of men never have real intimacy with a woman. That means the other 50% have multiple intimate relationships with women, and the one, those ones that don't are angry and sad and lonely, and they are often misogynistic and resent women who didn't give them the time they think they deserve. Again, judge people by the silly things that bother them. The anger says nothing about Taylor Swift. It says everything about the men bothered by it. Now, first of all, here's what I don't understand. Well, you can do that all you want. But here's what I want to say. First of all, I can't uh, speak to everybody, Mr. Uh, Coward. I mean, That's his name. Coward. Oh, I call it Coward. <laughs> Mr. Coward. Here's, I can't <laughs> speak to Coward. everybody. But your, your stats are all off, first of all. Can you read the first line again? No. That was so funny. Your stats are 50% of men have never had real intimacy with a woman, and that means 50% of 
have multiple intimate relationships with women. Either have all or none. And, right, and the ones who don't, which I don't know where this percentage is, because this guy can't count, uh, <laughs> apparently have, are just angry and lonely and blah, 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 and misogynistic. Uh, this guy just wants these people on his show. I think this He's trying to get angry. on. We he does. He sounds angry. Men. And first of all, there are women who have knocked this, not just yeah. men. What's wrong with this guy? This guy is insane. You know why we're talking about it? Because it's news, coward. That's why we're talking about it. So, that's all. It isn't that said nothing about your personal life. I mean, why would he go after people like that? He attacked the viewership. That's not good for business. No, he's an idiot. He attacked the weird, lonely, insecure men out there. But, who, but I'm saying, what about the weird, lonely, insecure women? And that's true. what is the... I, I mean, this sounds. This guy sounds like he's got the yeah. hot No, this, this sounds like it came from the heart. Like, he was speaking He was speaking from the heart. He no. was really upset. No, he, he wanted to get... He knows this oh, is a popular nobody train. Nobody approved this before he sent it out, that's for sure. I don't know about that. Well, apparently he was doing his homework, but he can't add. Yeah. So what do you make of that? Is that true? The people who are saying anything about this are weird, lonely... Non-intimate, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I mean, I would disagree with him, but at the same time, it seems to me that he is more angry than anybody I've ever heard talk about Taylor Swift in football. Yes, we're not. I've talking... seen more memes about Taylor Swift in football than I've heard angry comments. Who? Is, what relationship has not been attacked? I mean, Lisa Marie Presley and Michael Jackson. That was attacked. Anytime there's there's two celebrities together, they get attacked. What planet does this guy live on? He's just running to Taylor Swift's defense. Right, he must. I think well, he's got a little... I'm you, Mr. There, Coward, I think, I think you got I think, a little thing think, going on I there. Think Taylor Swift's got a cult behind her. And, he's and this guy's a it. part of it. What's this guy watching at home? Is he looking at those movies and... Ooh, you know? <laughs> if I was... Honest to God, this, this is the most ridiculous thing. What is that? 50% of men have never... This, he claims this is some kind of poll or something. 50% <laughs> of men have never had real intimacy with a woman. Fifty percent, one out of two. I think two. he just pulled out some numbers yeah, there. I, I think he really did just say one. Yeah. And, and if you don't, if you don't, if you, you either have all or nothing. All no, or you either have all or multiples. Yeah. <laughs> There's nobody who's with one. There, you either have, have never had intimacy with a woman, and half of the societies had never had intimacy with a woman, and the other half has had multiple intimacies with women. <laughs> one intimacy or several intimacies. Yes. So what? Where do these two fools fall? Well, I know Taylor Swift has had multiples. And Travis Kelsey, I'm guessing multiples as well, so they don't fall into either one of the... I guess they fall into 50%. I mean, everyone falls into one of the two, I guess. <laughs> All or no, nothing. No, no, that's not true because... He said 50-50. But he's obviously no scientist. Uh, <laughs> what about the, the, the faithful, the one? The, you're with the one. Yeah, how many people... Where, where are those people how many, at? How many of them Apparently not. Know? Zero. <laughs> Why? No, Didn't many. you say that things are decreasing according to people? Yeah, but not all. Oh. <laughs> not all. That's what this guy said. But then he talks about the other group, the ones that are angry and sad and lonely and that are misogynistic. Now, come on. Misogynistic about what? I don't know. He was speaking from the heart there. No, I think he was speaking from his checkbook. Uh, there are women refs in the NFL. Nobody complains about the women refs. Now, this was silly, and you know what? Everybody's talking about it because it's a story. And if you're in the media, you're not going to talk about the Super Bowl. I guess the USA Today is misogynistic, uh, non-intimate people because they ran it as the lead story. The, the Taylor Swift thing as yeah. the lead story? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he just was like going off the rails a little bit. Yeah, he, I think it is weird that, that she was like the lead story, though, because it does kind of take away, oh my gosh. Took it all. The bugs. What's that stuff on your face? There's nothing no, on You my notice face. nobody saw, else is dodging I over here. I saw a, mat, a bug land on Matt's face like 10 minutes ago, and I, I was just. You know, you got closer there for a second, <laughs> and honest to God, I thought I saw a road to Mississippi. Okay. I mean, really. It was very close that time. Yeah, those wrinkles just keep getting deeper and deeper. It, it, was, it, was, like, it, was, like, it was like a two lane highway there. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I don't even remember what I was talking about. There were the bugs this and, guy. and the wrinkles. This guy. I know, I just think he was like overreacting, obviously. Oh, the fact that like she was the lead story, I think it does take away from like Travis Kelsey and like the NFL. Yeah. Like, I, that's sad, which I mean, that's not Taylor's fault. Like, yes, that's it is. the media's fault. She needs to stay back. That's, I don't think she has to stay back. Yes, if you don't want to steal the thunder and you're a bazillionaire and you are the most popular thing going right now, you got to lay back. The media should just not, like, talk about it, I guess. Like, it's not her fault that she exists and people write stories about her. You can't ignore the elephant in the room. If somebody got shot on the field, you would just ignore that. 
Taylor Swift's the elephant on the field? Yes. Okay, but she's, she wanted to go support Travis. Like, why is she not supposed to do that? Why can't she do it in the tunnel? Why does it have to be on the field in front of everybody? Why does she have because to be... Because everybody else's families was down there celebrating with them. But everybody... Again, you she's not self-aware. Everybody's family is not a billionaire, number one Time Magazine person of the year. Yeah, but I don't think that she should have to change, like, how she's going to, like, support her significant Well, then don't complain when you steal famous. his thunder. Is she complaining? I think uh, Colin Coward's complaining. You were complaining. The, about the thunder? Yeah. I mean, I was, I think that's, like, annoying that, like, the, the, that's what the NFL would, like, talk about, And I did guess, you notice the but... kiss picture? I saw the kiss picture oh, because, yeah. yeah, you can't even tell it's him. It's the back, it's of, his, a, yeah, it's the back, back of his head, and she even knew she put her hand right on the side of his face. She can't even see that. But you can see her, man. She knew that camera was right there. It was like oh one of these gosh. numbers. No, was I that? bet the camera was adjusting for her. Was it? I bet the camera was adjusting for no, her. No, no. That's it. You get the back of his head. <laughs> he, he could have been like the referee. It wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> it didn't matter who that guy was. Yeah. That's sad. And he just played the game. Yeah. That's showbiz, I guess. That's showbiz. So is this real, or is this just for our... In the off-season, does this thing go down the toilet? I, I think that there's a fair chance that everybody... That, that the, the, the possibility Taylor Swift is so, is so popular. And, I mean, I don't know much about her uh, past relationships or anything. But maybe, maybe she just, like... So she'll, so maybe she'll say she'll, like, date somebody, right? And then she'll just, like, gather a whole bunch of fan base based on that person. And then she'll, like, all right, I've used this person. Gone. Why does she always date hop the to famous? this person, gather the fan base, hop to the next person, gather the fan you base. You got it. I don't think she really thing. does that. Like I said, she was in, like, a six-year relationship last time that was super private. With her uh, manager? No. No. Who was it? Joe Alwyn. Who's that? He is a British, like, actor or something, I think. Yeah. Actor. I think she's a. Uh, I think she's, Does she ever date like a popcorn vendor? I mean, it'd probably just be hard because, like you previously talked about, with the whole power dynamic. Like, at least if they're somewhat famous, they probably have some of their own money. If it's like a popcorn vendor, it's like she has way more like power and money than that person. Like, there's not even like a comparable. Like, I don't know. I just think she's getting in the way, and I think eventually, what this is going to wear on him when the newness of this wears off. When he goes back and looks at this and how this was covered, and he became... You know, it was like when uh, Angelina Jolie and, and uh, oh, uh, Brad Pitt got together. It was Brangelina. Brangelina. Yeah, because it became a thing. They both were... And, and, and that doesn't work, and it ended. And he left nice little Jennifer Aniston for uh, Angelina Jolie. Imagine leaving Jennifer Aniston. Imagine. <laughs> well, imagine how good Angelina Jolie must have been. No. You know, Jennifer Aniston was the girl next door, and Angelina Jolie did not live next door. That's sad. It depends on what you go for. Jennifer Aniston's the best. But the point is, <laughs> we're not talking about Jennifer Aniston. I know. The I just point like her. is, the point. Why is this show so off topic? This is like the ADD version <laughs> of this show. But the point is, is that eventually he's going to get tired of this and say, "Why is this girl always in the picture? Why are people knocking me out of the way to get to her? You know, I'm somebody." I mean, I think, I think it's just one of those things to where Taylor Swift. <clears throat> Sorry, I think it's just one of those things to where Taylor Swift is more popular than Travis Kelsey. So I Way think more I think more people just care about Taylor Swift. So more people focus on the fact that it's Taylor Swift dating Travis Kelsey. But I think if you fo but I think if you watch football, and, or and, and like you actually like football, you're gonna look at it as more as Travis Kelsey is dating Taylor Swift, and you're gonna look at it from the opposite opposite perspective. I don't know. It's awful strange to me, and. Um... But do you think it's a real romance? Or do you think this is more a little show busy? I don't know, man. I give it... I, I, I'll give it a solid 50-50, but I... I oh, you I, like I, this I guy? Know. I don't know. Like a coward? <laughs> I think it's a real romance. I don't oh, know. Oh, I'm shocked that you would think <laughs> I that. I just... Taylor Swift doesn't have a good track record no. with quote-unquote real romance. No, and how long has this thing been going on? Six months? Not even that, is yeah, it? Yeah, and people think that he... Look, that proposal already I, coming. Yeah, I will give the same advice to them that I gave to... that I have given to other people. Three years minimum, one of them living together. There you go. And you believe this is real? I believe this is real. All right, well, we're not wrapped up on this topic because I tell you what, when this Super Bowl thing happened, the people at Fox News went nuts. 
And uh, they are not happy over there at Fox News about this, and we'll tell you why. And we'll talk about that when we come back, amongst other things. Stay tuned. Hey, Scott Spears, Matt and Carrington back with you after the break, and we got to the real heat of the matter of current events with the Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift, Super Bowl coming up not too far from now. But before we go away from that, guess what? There's another conspiracy theory about this whole uh, Super Bowl coming up and Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. And boy, it's got the people at Fox News all been out of shape. Five different shows the other night covered this. Hannity, their number one show, four other shows. And the conspiracy is that during the Super Bowl, Taylor Swift is going to endorse Joe Biden, and these people at Fox are not happy at all about this. Matt, what do you think? I think that the NFL would be pretty upset with Taylor Swift if she used the Super Bowl as a platform to make a political statement. Are they going to be talking to her? What I didn't understand was, is when is she going to be talking? I don't see, um, from, uh, from my understanding, the NFL has asked Taylor Swift not even, like, this year. I mean, I assume they have asked her this year. But in, in previous years, they have asked Taylor Swift to perform at the halftime show, and she will not do it. Oh, she'll do it this year. I don't think she will. I, it's going to be a surprise. You watch. No, I, I don't think she will. But I think that the people at Fox News are kind of making it into something that it's not. Like, them ha like having five stories about it, like... It's not like they're endorsing, the only ones I saw. they're endorsing Joe Biden, it seems. Oh, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, if they keep bringing it up, it hasn't even happened yet. They're like... <laughs> Talking about I the think, possibility five times, like. Well, I mean, I think I think what she means. I don't. So, Fox News. Is, I, I know. Is, I understand that. Like, okay. they're pretty like Republicans, yes. okay. so they obviously so, yeah. would not be endorsing I, I Joe think Biden. What she but means like, is, the fact that they're bringing it up so yeah. much, like, they're making it into an issue. I think issue. what she means is like they're gonna say it so it's much that people who, who the people who like Taylor Swift are going to think that Taylor Swift has endorsed Joe Biden. Yeah, they're kind of like making it into something that it's not. Yeah, I'm glad we finally got an interpreter for you because. Sometimes it's been difficult to understand what she's saying. That's understandable. I'm glad Matt, Matt, Matt understands me. Did you understand what she said now? <laughs> I do, yeah. Oh, good, because I certainly didn't. I hope the people at home did. But anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that um, why are they so upset about this? I mean, is she going to swing the election? I think she could. I think that they, they think that she's going to try to swing the election. She could. She could. Maybe. People follow her blindly. It's very strange. You know, never mind. Go ahead, say it. Go ahead, <laughs> get, get, say, take, take it in quick. I was gonna say, you know, you know who else follows a leader blindly? Colts. There you go. <laughs> what do you think? I if, don't. If her fan, if she said vote for Joe Biden, you think they would? Uh, I yeah, I think yeah. her fans probably so would. So do I. So, uh, I'll have to give I'll have to give some of the fans the benefit of the doubt. I'll say that there has to be at least a few of Taylor Swift's fans who would be like, "Vote for Joe Biden." I don't know about all that. And then no. she then then they'd vote for whoever they, they like wanted her. To. But I think that uh, there no are pun also a that fair all. portion of Taylor Swift's fans who would vote for Joe Biden. Also, you have to keep in mind that I, that I I would almost uh, put money on it that. Uh, a lot of Taylor Swift's fans are under the age to vote, so I don't think that that, that matters all too much. I don't know. I think she has plenty of fans that are voting age. I think that, like, that's, like, part of what people like about her because, you know, she's, like, obviously been, like, singing and producing music for, I mean, almost 20 years now, I think. So, um, I mean, her fans have just, like, been able to, like, grow up with her, kind of. So, like, I think that quite a bit of them would be old enough to vote. If she said vote for Joe Biden, would you... Uh, no, I mean, I'm not going to just, like, I'm not going to blindly follow that. Like, Oh, I, look at you. Yeah, I'm standing I'm, up against I'm Taylor different. Swift. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> How do you think Taylor Swift would feel about this? Yeah, she wouldn't like that. Taylor Swift's going to be mad at me. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I will. <laughs> Some Swifty you are. <laughs> I'm a fake fan. All right, well, you know, Fox News is going to do what Fox News <laughs> is going to do, and she's going to do what she's going to do, but I highly doubt there's going to be any political endorsement at the Super Bowl. I think there might be one before the November election, but probably not during the Super Bowl. Anyway. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Now, this is strange, but it did happen. Elmo, the character from Sesame Street, uh, tweeted this week, <laughs> nice. just checking how is everybody doing. And I think Sesame Street did this as kind of a joke. Uh, the tweet was, just checking how is everybody doing. Well, uh, truckloads of people came back and talked about their anxiety, their grief, their despair. To the point where Sesame Street posted links to mental health resources for people. So, do people need to be checked on? Are we not checking in on people, asking them how they're doing? And are people this upset? Anxiety, grief, and despair. I, I think that 
uh, people definitely lack resources sometimes like if they feel like lonely and like don't always know where to go I mean like like you said if you're posting links I guess you can like find help online and stuff but like I we talked about before there's like the loneliness epidemic where people just like feel really isolated in like today's society so like they probably just feel that way even if there are resources available go to a doctor <laughs> take one of these resources upon you and go to a doctor okay. so says Elmo I mean I think I think that uh, it's it's uh, a lot easier for people for some reason to like I don't know if you ever asked somebody if they're okay but like nine out of like I don't know, 99 out of a hundred even times if you ask somebody how they're doing they could be having the absolute worst day they of lie. their lives and they'll say mm-hmm. I'm doing I'm I'm good how are you or mm-hmm. like I'm fine something like that. Because they're not really asking. It's just, like, habitual. You're like, how are you? And then you say, I'm good. How are you? I really want to know. Yeah, but, like, even if, like, even if, like, I asked, so, like, say I asked you and you told me, like, I'm fine. I'd be like, like, and if I was genuinely concerned, I'd always follow up with, are you sure? Mm -hmm. And then they'll just, yep, I'm fine. See, I think if you follow up, sometimes people will open up to you. But, like, I'm just thinking about, like, you know, since, like, I work at the register sometimes, whenever you're like, hey, how are you? It's like, okay, we're not really looking to, like... (laughs) trauma dump yeah. right now but like you know in some case scenarios if you're like comfortable with the person i think like i don't really have a problem telling them how i am i think so it's just me. a lot easier for people to uh instead of telling people that they uh know or uh, something like that uh somebody you know that you have to see they they it's just a lot easier to to tell you know <laughs> elmo on twitter That's yeah but true. why is there so much anxiety grief and despair uh, funnily enough, I'm going to blame the, uh, the growth of social media. I don't think people get out enough anymore. I think people, um, I think people also focus too much on what's happening on social media. I think people forget that what's on social media isn't, uh, always and probably usually isn't the truth or ac- or an accurate depiction of what happened or anything like that. It's just... I'll bug just one of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh my but... <laughs> Oh, it's making the greatest TV show ever. What's wrong with you? Oh my gosh. My oh gosh. lord. Oh, it itch. Oh, it itch. Sorry. <laughs> that was scary. But uh, I think that, uh, yeah, moral of the story, uh, social well, media. Well, thank you for blowing your nose on me. I appreciate that. I Glad know. I got the right seat I here. I just breathed out to make sure the bug wasn't still in there. But you turned and yeah, I was. Yeah, it was right here. It was right here. Uh, no, you weren't. We go back and look at the tape. <laughs> I didn't blow my nose on you. I'm sorry. Okay. The bug's gone. Nobody panic. <laughs> I wasn't panicked. Scary. Oh. To go off of what Matt was saying, I think that people really focus <laughs> on the negative a lot of times, though. I'm professional, oh, guys. Come on, smooth. let's keep going. Oh, that was smooth. <laughs> no, no, Man, no. Man, alive. Okay, do you know how many like, people... We'll just edit that right out. <laughs> just crop that Just out. keep on going. <laughs> Yeah, crop that out. As I was saying, I think people tend to focus on the negatives a lot of times, though. Uh, Like, I I always hear people, especially, like, since I work at a pharmacy, like, there's a lot of older people that'll come, and it's always like, oh, the world's not, like, like it used to be and everything. Like, everybody's always got something to complain about. Like, I think people just dwell on the negatives a lot of times. I think we don't have enough. Smooth. (laughs) Whoa. That's what I was thinking about before the bug went in my nose. I don't even know what you said. Go ahead. (laughs) Take the tape back. We can figure out what I said. I think uh, I think that we we sometimes don't have um, I guess real big of problems to solve. So we sometimes will um, I guess make mountains out of molehills in terms to because human minds are like almost built to like problem solve. And when there's no problems, we get bored. So we like almost create problems to solve. Okay. I don't know. I think people just don't know what they're doing. Now, I like this next story. I, no, I really think they don't. They, they're not honest with other people. They're not honest with themselves. They're not honest. Uh, people don't really tell you how they're feeling. They give you some little baloney I, answer. I think if you're going to be honest to anybody, you should be honest to yourself. Because if you're going to lie to yourself, if, if you can't trust people yourself, people lie to themselves all to the trust? time. People, people look for crutches in life. People go from crutch to crutch to crutch to crutch to crutch. And it's a sad thing, but you can't change it. It's habitualness. And, you know, one day, hopefully they can stand without a crutch, but it's it's hard uh, for some people. Now, moving on, Elmo, sorry all, all this bad stuff came your way. Now, this is a great story. Uh, I guess a guy and, and a, a woman went out on a date. Uh, they went on two dates. And on the second date, 
After the second date, the woman emailed the guy and said, you know what, I just didn't feel any connection there. There's no love connection. She I don't want to see him. Emailed him. I don't want to see you again. And the guy sent her an email back. I love this. The guy sent her an email back. And he said, you know what, you're exactly right. I wasn't feeling any connection either after two dates. So since we were just friends out having dinner, um, here's the bill for $60. This is your half of the dinner. Could you please mail that to me? Thank you very much. That's how you do it. What do you think about that, Matt? Uh, I think the $60 for two dates is a bit absurd. I don't know. I no, no, $60 for the second date dinner. Oh, half. It was $120. He was trying to parade this girl around. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I guess if, uh, in my opinion, like, once you, like, She just went out for a somebody, free meal, so he's no, making her pay. I mean, I think that once it, you ask somebody to a second date, there's a presumption that there's a, that there's, um... She went. Interest there. She went. Yeah, but maybe she like offered to pay there, and he's like, "Oh, I got it." But like, I don't think she did, or he wouldn't have sent this email. Oh, that's okay. That's true. Which I mean, I think that's dirty. Like, I feel like you're supposed to like offer to pay. Like, I, I, I know I always do if I'm on a date. I'll be like, "Oh, do you want me to pay?" Like, and they're like, "No," but like, you know, no way. Said, do you want me to pay on a date? No. Yeah, they. Are, yeah, yeah. I really like <laughs> no. you to pay. Matter of fact, okay, could, I don't could say you it like that? that. Like. You know, like, I'm not, like, just expecting them to. Now, you like, know darn well, be honest, if you were on a date with a guy and you said, do you want me to pay? And he said, yes. <laughs> and that would be no second date. Now, be honest. No, I don't think that that's true. Oh. I don't think that's true. Oh, may a bug fly up your nose. No, no. <laughs> like, if they, like, if they pay for dinner and then we go to, like, a movie after, like, I'm going to pay for one of those two things. Like, I'm at least going to What, are you going to rip the card out before he has a chance? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I do do that. I'm yeah. like, oh, I got it. Oh, but for what reason? Just because, like, I don't, I don't think it's, like, nice to feel like that somebody else should be obligated just, like, based on gender. So I should guess. she pay the $60 since there is no love connection here? No, I feel like he should have brought it up earlier, like at the at the table. I feel like at this point he should just kiss his sixty dollars goodbye. But like if he wasn't feeling it, he should have just been like, "We're going Dutch on this meal." Like he already paid. Like it's. Too, I don't too know. Late. I don't it's think you should over. take a sixty dollar dinner if you aren't feeling anything, which this girl wasn't. I don't. I mean, apparently he wasn't either. If he's just like, yeah, I agree. I mean, so, like, what's, uh, nice uh, dinner. I mean, I guess they're both at fault. Like, if they weren't feeling anything, like, he shouldn't have just like, offered to pay for it at all. I mean, like, I don't think it's that he wasn't feeling anything. I think he was probably just upset that she went on this second date and then spent $60 that he paid for. And then after this, after the second date, not the first date, after the second date, she was like, you know. <laughs> okay, well, why'd they go to such an expensive place? Like, you don't have to go to a $60 restaurant. Texas Roadhouse is a great restaurant, and you're going to spend, like, 20 bucks there. I'm There's just cheaper options. Like, you didn't have to go that fancy. Who, who picked to go to the fancy restaurant, her or him? I think I have a gift card to the Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> that's nice. I think that's on my next date. That's what I'll be doing. That's fine. Gift card it. Yeah, gift card it out. Yeah, nobody needs to argue. That's right. That's a good strategy. But I don't know. I You know, why didn't she pay? I mean, if he's asking for his money back, if there's no connection here, pay it. Why did Why did he initially pay, though? Maybe he was trying to be gallant. Maybe he was waiting for her to go for half the bill and she didn't. <laughs> okay, well, he should, have, he should have said something then. Listen, the whole email, uh, I'm not feeling it. it. She should have said that at the end of the dinner. Then I would yeah. have given her a better yeah. grade here. That's Sorry. True. You don't wait the till the next day and send an email. Is a little, the email. You know, though, but I'm all for texting people and ending friendships and relationships. I think that's easier. Because I believe that if you actually have to be in person with somebody, there's a lot of conversation that goes down that's kind of superfluous. So I really prefer. I'm gonna have to agree with you. There you go. I'm gonna say that uh, you have to. You, when, you, when you ask somebody out, though, you have to ask them out in person. But when you break up with them, there's no need to do it in person. Because like then there's gonna be a whole like oh, 45 oh, minute conversation that you don't need, and it's not worth it. Just no. just just, just text them. send them a text and Bye -bye. leave it be. <laughs> yeah. See you next time. Yep. <laughs> nice to know you. I think that's I, you when later. you end a friendship, when you end a, a relationship, that it can only be bad if you do it in person. I think I kind of agree with you guys. Like, surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly enough, I, I kind of agree. I mean, it depends, like, on the length of the relationship. Like, if they were together for, like, a long time, like, it's kind of sucky to just up and be like, hey, I'm not feeling this anymore. Bye. Like, maybe they deserve more of an explanation. But, like, in other senses... You like, know what I say? I said, we're going in a different direction. Yeah, I'm going, going in a different, in a different direction. direction. It's been nice. It's away from you, that's it's, yeah, sure. Whatever direction you're in, I'm going in the opposite. <laughs> that's how we're going to play that from now on. Now, speaking of directions, you know, 
I know. It's kind of the you know. it's kind of the Eastern Seaboard. <laughs> Listen, you can make all the little nasty remarks you want. I can't help that you, you have a. This. No, I'm sorry that there's a whole issue going on over here, but whatever. There's no issue going on. Okay. Um, how about this? For, would you be upset if your friends had a secret group chat without you? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, now wait. Well, that would hurt my feelings. I'd the people sad. on Reddit <laughs> said, yes, it would bother us terribly. But I don't think that that's... Yeah. There are certain conversations you have with other people that you would not want somebody cued in on. I mean, you, you sometimes you're talking about them, so why would you want to cue them in? Well... So I guess it You're depends. Not that I guess friend. it. I guess it depends. No, on I don't the, think that's true. Uh, on, the, on the situation here. So th did they make the group chat specifically with the intent of not putting me in it? Could be. I because, don't know. Because like, if my so like, for instance, like I have a lot of friends that don't watch or like football. Okay. So like, if I had a group chat that was designed so we could talk about football. I wouldn't put them in it, because they'd just be annoyed by the constant spamming of messages. And also, if my friends had a group chat, I wouldn't want to be in it, because I, I, that's why I don't like group chats, because I, I am constantly being bombarded with notifications. But what are you being... What, what are you missing out on here? Uh, I mean, it would just hurt to think that your friends are, like, intentionally not including you in the conversation. Well, it's probably because they don't want to include you. Right, so they're probably not very good friends, so you should probably... No, not, no, like, no! That doesn't mean friends. you're not a good friend. Yeah, if they're trying to intentionally Now, wait a second. You? Now, hold on. Now, let's say I, I'm i friends with two different people. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll shrink this down. Yeah. Okay, I'm friends with two different people, and somebody messages me and says, you know, I that other person, eh, they're a little flaky. Now, what am I supposed to do? Say, uh... Don't bother me with that because I'm also friends with them. We can't talk. I actually have had friends say that. I'll be friends with two people and I'll have one friend say, you know, I actually don't like that person. I'd rather you weren't friends with them. And then There and then, you go. And then but this is when uh but I've never lost a friend. I will I've always said I I will always tell that I've only had it happen one time, but I told that person that I do not play. Uh, it's not my situ so it's it, it's not my situation. So I'm not gonna pick a side. I'm gonna stay friends with both of you because I'm friends with both of you. I like both of you. Mm -hmm. This person didn't do anything to me. You haven't done anything to me. If you guys done stuff to each other, that's that's on you. I'm not part of it. Yeah, but sometimes yeah. I now see. But there are different situations because sometimes people are naive and they don't understand what the whole circular issue is here. I mean, if you do harm to somebody, that's one thing. But if you do harm to something that everybody's involved with, then yeah, no, I don't think that that's true. I think that you should have enough gumption to say, wait a second, you know, you maybe didn't do anything personally to me, but, you know, I don't like how you did that. That, that was I, not good. I guess you would have to give me a scenario. Well, like, for example, let's say... Your friend, you know, three people are friends, and one of the friends um, uh, uh, cheats. There's three sisters. One of them sleeps with, yeah, that the, whole with thing. the husband. Yeah, you guys were apoplectic <laughs> about that. So right there, oh, dump her, get her out of there. No, that's not what happens in real life. See, they change the situation okay, a little so, bit. So, so, okay, so in this situation, if, okay, so if I had two friends, okay, and then one of them had a girlfriend, yeah. And then and then my other friend had cheated on the one that had the or cheated on my friend who had the girl or you understand what I'm saying. Kind of. <laughs> if, if 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 the one friend who was not in this relationship was in it uh, had relationship. Oh, wait a second. Uh, what? The okay. friend is it who? Okay, so okay, if, start with A. So if a friend friend one A one has a girlfriend. Yes. Friend two Yeah. is 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 uh is cheating or I guess girlfriend is cheating with friend two. Okay. Sneaky link. Yeah. So in this scenario, <laughs> in this scenario, I would um, I would have to. I I don't so friend if, all of them because if, I don't understand the whole story. If, I'd say here I'm not friends with any of you. I don't understand friend, any of it. I don't want to be around you people. I'm going someplace else. Okay. So 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 friend so friend one has a girlfriend and then friend two and 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 friend one's girlfriend you know are, are like you know hooking up right. So so on the low. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so like but then but then they get caught. And then one of my and then the friend who had and then friend one who the one who has the girlfriend comes to me and says, "Hey, uh, you know, X X was cheating, or X was uh, was having a uh, relationship with my girlfriend while we were together." And then at that point, I think I would have to be like, "Look, if you ain't gonna be loyal to the friends, then I can't be loyal to you, because you would you would do the same to me." Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a question of character at that point, really. What? Did you I, not follow? That was easy to yeah, follow. Yeah, was I got it. Well, here's what I think. Uh, I think I would just get rid of that whole group because yeah. they're just all weirdos. Yeah. They're just all just strange. They're just all weird and they're all strange and who needs to be around yeah. that type of I, I agree. Get better friends in that case scenario. Yes, but no, sometimes, listen, I can't, st like if you come at me and you say something about somebody else, I can't stop you. Like half the time I don't even know what you're saying. If you send me a message, you just ding, there it is. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Not respond. Didn't see that? Oh, I didn't see it. Sorry. When I get a message that I don't want to respond to, I just swipe it away and then, <laughs> then just forget about it. All I'm saying is sometimes some things are meant to be heard by one person and some things are meant to be heard by another. It doesn't mean you're trying to be deceitful or rude. It just means that you have different conversations with different people. I, okay, like, in a, in a sense, like, I guess I have, like, a group of friends where there's, like, eight of us or something, and then, like, sometimes, you know, we'll hang out in, like, smaller groups because some people aren't available or, available or something, and then, like, to make separate plans, we'll, like, form a smaller group chat, that way the other people's phones aren't getting blown up, but it's not an intentional, like, we're discluding you situation, it's, like, excluding. they're excluding, you, excluding, sorry, uh, situation, because, you know, they're not around, like, they're not coming to the thing that we're talking about so like it just depends on the on the situation but if it's just like you're intentionally not putting this person in there because you're you have mean things to say about them like yeah that would hurt see i don't like the group chats because they just go off all the time yep that's ding, why i don't ding, like to put ding, group chats ding, ding. Just and i can't read all that crap so I used to be like, in a group chat, you either and I have couldn't... To, you either have to be in the group chat when the conversation starts, or you have like 15 minutes of reading to catch up where everybody I, was Right, saying. I would be doing my show in the morning, and this group chat would be going on about my show, and like, I'm going to go right back and read those eight paragraphs. <laughs> I mean, that ain't going to happen. So I, I got out. Yep. I would do the same thing. It's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, no, I don't know. I'm here. My friends aren't talking about the show in the group chat. <laughs> Well, listen, all I'm saying is is that I believe that you you, you are not going to go and purposely try to hurt somebody's feelings. If you do that, you're a bad person. But, you know, sometimes there are flaws that you see in people that you are going to bring up because that's life. I mean, well, not everybody's perfect. I think if you see a flaw in somebody that you're going to bring up, you should bring it up to the person who would you see the flaw. Oh, you think that's a good idea until you do it. I mean, I've done it. Yeah. yeah oh, you can do it. They're not going to like it. They don't like it, but... We're still friends. Yeah, but why bring it up? What's the point in that? Uh, Where is the game? They're not going to change. People don't change. Yeah, I mean, you do They're not... Hope. Uh, yeah, well, you can hope. It ain't going to happen. I'm just saying, I think it's perfectly fine to... Now, if, if they ask you point blank, now, I don't think you should lie to them, but why go out of your way? See, I think the ones that ask you point blank are the ones that still have some hope left. Because if they ask you point blank, then I feel like they deep down know that there's a problem with this. Because they have to ask for a second opinion. I don't know. I, I just think sometimes you have to be nice to somebody to throw them off. You know? It's <laughs> all... Setting up a trap. Yeah, get that set well, off you your do, trail. because if you're mean to somebody, they're going to know you're not liking them, that they've done something wrong. So sometimes you have to turn up your nice meter and you have to say, okay, well, I'll have to throw them off here because then they'll think that everything's fine. You're, Ooh, won't that be great? So I think that's what you do in life. I mean, we all play parts. Somebody said the other day, I forget, I think somebody called into the morning show and said, life is a stage. You know, Shakespeare said that. Yeah, I mean, in a sense, and you're probably obviously trying to avoid conflict most of the time. That's what you're trying. You're not trying to save yourself. You're just trying to avoid conflict. And you don't want to hurt other people's feelings. If you're trying to hurt other people's feelings, I think you're nuts. And I think that's what the problem is. You're not going to go up and tell somebody to their face, uh, you stink. You're not going to do that. But if somebody asks you and that's your honest opinion, uh, you might say it. Yeah, I mean, I think if they ask you, they're asking for your honest opinion. Not if they ask you. Somebody else might ask you about them. Oh, so you give your honest opinion to other people, but you don't tell the person how you feel about it. If they them. don't ask, no. Okay. No, if they don't ask. But if they ask you how you feel about them, then you give them your honest opinion? Yes. Okay. But I don't think they would. Most time they, they don't. They might. Maybe they're self-aware. Uh, I don't know. I Maybe. But I, I don't... Who cares about the group chat? I really don't <laughs> even understand the whole thing. Because I, I... You know, if you're included in one, I guess that's nice. Is that supposed to be friendly? Yeah. Here, you're in this thing you're now. In. You're still included. You're part of something. 
people need to have better things to do with their time. This is what this is a sign of to me. People need to spend better, do things, plant a garden. I think if it bothers you that you, yeah, I think if it bothers you that your friends don't put you in a group chat with all the other friends, I feel like you might you might need to go do some things. I don't know. You could, you could find something better to do than be in a group chat. You know, I thought about this last week because we had a big long discussion, and people can go back to last week's program, about the whole people overshare about being fired. And, you know, how people say in the broadcast industry, we're going in a different direction, you're never actually fired. And I think that's probably a good thing. You know, it does mean you're fired, but I think that eases it a little bit. I think that softens the blow. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes you feel like it's not so much on you that they're changing. You know, it's kind of like in the breakup. It's not you, it's me. Oh, you know? yeah. It's, it's a cliche. We're going in a different direction. Yeah. It's not you, it's me. Yeah, and I think cliches are fine. I think that's how you sometimes um, make people feel better. You know, you, you don't want to smash people. People are already despaired and depressed. They're talking to Elmo. They need help. You don't want to be the thing that pushes them over the edge. Do you think that they're ever genuine, though? And, like, that's what they really are, like, saying that because that's how they feel? What? The cliche is like it's not you, it's me. Well, I think a cliche is not real. I think that's the that's the point of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just thought it was like stereotypical. Was what? Oh, you think people really mean it's them? Yeah. No, maybe. nobody's ever thought it was them. Oh, okay. I was just curious. If you thought it was you, I think you would change yourself. Maybe, maybe not though. Maybe you don't want to change. But then that means you don't like them enough to change. So yeah. I think that's bad in and of itself. No, not necessarily. I think maybe you do like the person, but you shouldn't be changing for other people I mean, if you I've, don't want to change. I've actually had this uh, discussion with one of my friends. They they, they were like, well, maybe... Because their argument was that... Um, when somebody says it's not you, it's me. It's just like it's just like it's not your fault. I just lost feelings for you, kind of thing. But at the same time, I think that uh, if you ask that person why they lost feelings, they're gonna be they're they're probably gonna say I don't know. Mm -hmm. And if they say I don't know, then I think they probably never liked that person in reality to begin with. Do you like lose your feelings like out the door in the morning? That's why I think like you left they, the house, you were feeling feelings, and then all of a sudden, somewhere between there and the car, they fell. And that's why I said the feelings I don't fell know, out. That's why I said that I don't know that there ever was any actual feeling. Mm -hmm. If you have feelings for somebody, you always have them. Now you can pretend you don't, but you do. I think feelings can develop over time, though. What? You don't think your like feelings towards somebody can grow over time? Oh no, no, I think they can grow, oh, but okay. I'm saying I think you can't lose them. Once, Once you get there. them. Yeah, you can okay. lie to yourself okay. and say you've lost that's, them, but I think fair. they're always under there somewhere. Okay. That's why I think people marry the same person twice. I mean... <laughs> they're like, I love you again. I think yeah. a base rule for marrying the same person twice is an ex. Insanity. Is an ex is an ex for a reason. So no, like, it's not, though. This is why I had to explain the other morning, because I bring up the multiple marriages a lot, because it's funny to me, it's kind of like gravy and fruitcake. But I had to finally break it down to people and say, listen, you're the one who got married and divorced. I didn't do that. You did that to yourself multiple times. So if people are cynical about your lifestyle, it's because you created a lifestyle that was cynical. Yeah, I mean, if you make the decision to get married and divorced, it does take two to tango in those situations. Right, but no, if one, some, I'll give you two. I'll give you two okay. every time. You can have two. You can have two, but, but once you go into the third, listen, of course I'm going to be cynical. Three, it's a habit. Because I've heard that point. song and dance before. She's the one. He's the one. I've never met anybody like that before. I mean, come on. That, then it's, of course we're cynical. I've heard that somewhere before. <laughs> this is why Ross was so afraid of three divorces on Friends. There you, uh, right. That's why he was so afraid you know, of it. He didn't want to be three divorces, guy. <laughs> one of my... um. One of my friend's dads uh, got divorced, but this was uh, a while ago, and uh, and I remember him telling me uh, shortly after that that he was never going to get married again and that it was a sham. Well, but, I never believed that. It, it, yeah, because <laughs> lo and behold, as of I don't know a few months ago, he is <laughs> him and uh, him and I guess his uh, now fiance are engaged. So with one minute left to go, less than one minute left to go. If you learn anything from this show. Learn that people are not really honest, and you can't take their word for anything. You really have to go past it, and what are they really saying? Because they're not really saying the truth all the time. And that's what we've learned on this very analytic, very highbrow episode of The Exchange. And a fly went up your nose, and that's very highbrow. <laughs> for Carrington and Matt, this is Scott saying, have a great week, and we'll be back next week. Tune in on Friday nights. We're heading for the dugout.